Hey, and welcome to part two of our green screening series. In this episode, we're gonna look at how to pull the greatest key from part one, where we showed you how to set up your green screen, how to light it, and where your talent should stand. But today, today we're gonna to show you how to get the greatest key, how you can make it look as though there wasn't even a green screen there in the first place. Hey, Andy Evanson here for DigiPro Tips. And today we are looking at this second part of our green screening series. If you haven't, if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure you do because you'll be able to get on top of all of our tips and tricks to make sure that you are working smarter and not harder. And it'll include series like this. It'll include videos like this. Many, many, many more. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Right now though, let's jump into Premiere Pro. That's right, Premiere Pro and not After Effects. And I'll explain why in a bit so that I can show you exactly how to pull that key. Okay, so we're inside of Premiere Pro now and we have our green screen shot. As you can see from me standing in front of it right here. I'm just gonna find a good frame to work with here. As you can see, I've got a lot of nice green coverage around me, which is gonna help for our key, as I said in part one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for an effect called Ultra Key. And this is the effect that we are gonna use in Premiere Pro to create your key. And Ultra Key is an accelerated effect, which means it uses your GPU and not your CPU. And we're just gonna grab the little color picker here and pick a part of the green that is nearest to the head or the part of the, your talent that you want to showcase. Now, as you can see here, that looks like it's done a pretty good job with the transparency grid behind me. But if I turn that off, you can see there is still a lot that needs to be keyed out. So I'm just gonna change here to the alpha channel so I can see exactly what's going on. And what I like to do is I like to change my setting to aggressive. It doesn't matter if I've got the perfect key already out of the box, I'll always change that to aggressive because that gives me the best starting point I find. And now I'm just gonna create a mask around myself where I have my hands at the furthest point away from me so that I know that my hands aren't gonna go out of my mask. Just do that quickly here so I can show you. That also means that I'm not cleaning up anything that doesn't need to be cleaned up. And we'll just go back to composite here. So you can see that looks pretty good. But if we zoom in, you can see there are a lot of edges that still need doing right against my face and my fingers, for example, we can, we can get rid of that. We can make that better. So we're gonna go to our matte generation first off and we're gonna work with the transparency. And transparency is exactly what it says. It is the amount of transparency that is gonna show through the alpha channel when, you've, when you're creating your key. And you want to find a point where the talents any part of the talent doesn't become transparent, but you've still got rid of enough of that green screen behind so that if you put your key on top of any sort of image or video or background, you will be able to see it properly. The highlights do exactly what it says. It shows the amount of highlight from that transparency to show through on your key. And the shadows are the opposite. And usually the transparency and the shadows are two of the biggest ones to control here because as you can see, I've had to move the transparency down to 36 from 50 and the shadow all the way down so that I can get a nice clean key. Tolerance is the tolerance of how far that goes. Uh, and as you can see on my fingers just there, we'll zoom in a little bit. As you can see, if I play around with the tolerance, it goes a bit green around the motion blur edges of my fingers there. So we just wanna make sure that that's, we, we're just gonna keep that at 90 because that's a nice normal color. And the pedestal, don't usually do too much with that. Um, you can normally keep that at the default setting. Next, we're gonna work on our matte cleanup and the choke, that is basically, that changes the amount of pixels around the edges of your talent that it's going to take in or take out. Using the choke here, if I crank that up, you can see that it brings the image in but it's actually getting rid of detail. It's getting rid of some of my side of my face and my ear there. So we don't want to turn that up too far. And then what we'll do is we'll soften that so that it does act as a feather to that choke. And we're going to use the contrast here to try and just take that motion blur down a little bit and make it more believable. You will get motion blur, but with green screen, it can heighten it and make it look more obvious that you've green screened something. Now we'll move on to the spill. And if you don't have 
your screen lit correctly, if your talent is too close to your screen, you will get a lot of green hitting the sides and the back of your talent, and it'll be very obvious. Here, because we set it up, as I said in the first video, there isn't hardly any spill to work with, which is great. However, the talent will need some color correction after we've done our key. As you can see, I'm a little bit orange here. Okay, so that is our key cleaned up, and we're looking pretty good. But let's just throw a background under here so that we can see exactly how good it is. Just gonna throw a color mat on, and choose a nice dull pink, go for that. We'll stick that underneath. And as you can see, it looks pretty good, but there's some kind of like little pink dots happening on my chest. So let's just zoom in here and see what's happening. Okay, yep, yeah, so it looks like the transparency is showing through. So we'll just go back to our key and we'll work on that a little bit. So when you do a key, there's a lot of trial and error and it will never be the same each time. So you have to work with the different parameters and see what works in each time you do a shoot. But as you can see here, I've limited those pops a little bit. There are a couple more here, so we'll just work on those a bit more. And that's just moving your transparency up and down, playing with the shadows and the highlights. And I think here I need to change my shadow, not my transparency, so that I can get rid of that pink dot, but not have my background taken away. I'm gonna leave the transparency about where it was and just change the shadow amount. There you can see uh, that's going away. So I'll just leave it at the point where it goes and not go too far beyond that. And there we go, that's a pretty good map. But as I'm playing that through, you can see the motion blur around my hands. I think we could actually do a better job of that. So I am gonna just pump up that transparency a little bit further so that I can make sure that it doesn't look too obvious with that motion blur. And I think, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so you have your key and now you know how to green screen. Now you know how to set up, now you know how to get a key, now you know how to work with it in Premiere Pro. Yes, you can use it in After Effects with Key Light, but UltraKey can do exactly what you need it to. And if you haven't, if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure you do because you'll miss out on all of these types of videos if you don't. And remember, what we do here is we work smarter, we don't work harder. That means that we're giving you tips and tricks to make you more efficient, save you time, to make you more creative. We'll see you next time.